Now, is that a request for the Brothers Gib, I see? Let's go. Hi, guys. Welcome to Libre X. Hope everyone's having a good day. I know I am. We are back with the request from our patron, Scott. Once again, we're going back to the Bee Gees, and we're going to be listening to the track Too Much Heaven, which was released, I believe, in 1979. Um, yes, January 9th is actually, well, they performed it at the music for UNICEF concert in 1979, and then the song later found its way onto the group's 13th album, Spirits Having Flown. It was number one in both the US and Canada. And in the US, the song was the first single out of three from the album to interrupt a song stay at number one. Too Much Heaven knocked off Les Freak <laughs> off the top spot uh, for two weeks before Les Freak returned to number one once again. Um, there's been a ton of singles from this album, I believe, and uh, of course they've got tons of number ones all over the place. They are one of the most, um, I guess, critically and uh, commercially successful album or artists ever. And I didn't know that until you guys let me know last week or two weeks ago, whenever we did the last one. Um, and I really enjoyed the last one. It wasn't um, it wasn't what I was expecting. You know, that's what you get for, I guess, listening to other people. You know, <laughs> gotta go check it out yourself. That should be the motto of this channel. So here we go. Good God. All right. Thank you again, Scott. I appreciate it. And I will link that other Bee Gees video we did uh, two weeks ago if you want to go watch that. All right. Too much heaven. Bee Gees. Three, two, one, go. Powerful, bro. Watch out. 
Good hair, bro. Some luscious locks. <laughs> Those pants, bro. Come on, man. <laughs> what the fuck? Everyone in the symphony is just like... <laughs> that is hilarious, bro. That was great. I'm not gonna lie. Those harmonies were stellar. I... I've heard, you know, staying alive and such. And yes, baby. Door. Sorry. Daddy, Danica, Daddy, yeah, you, Danica. Yeah, I know who it is. Oh, hi, buddy. Me, Danica, my brother. Hi, everybody. Hi. Sorry about that. She just wanted to be seen, <laughs> as usual. Um. That was awesome. The vocal harmonies are obviously the thing that stood out the most because that was mostly what the song was. But when he took lead, oh my God, those notes he hit were just spectacular. And I didn't even really, well, I mean, I did obviously note the vocals in the last one. You know what I mean? That's kind of their thing. But I didn't really realize how well they work together and how separately they can do it as well. It's so interesting. Um, it's almost like that CSN harmony where that one of the three voices become one basically, you know, and when they did hit those notes in this song, I mean, it kind of raises <laughs> the hair on your arms a little bit, you know, this isn't everyone's probably flavor in music, you know, but I enjoyed it. It's definitely not my strong suit or my usual fare. I would say that I would like, but I really enjoyed it. It's fun. It had a good meaning behind it. It felt like, and, uh, they just, they're just so endearing, you know what I mean? Like, you can just watch them, and they seem like they're good folks. You know what I mean? I don't know if, you, if, I, if I'm reading that correctly or not, but they seem like good people. Um, so, apparently, Robin reportedly said on uh, an interview for, Bil for Billboard magazine uh, that this track was one of his favorite songs uh, of the Bee Gees. Um, it was released as a single in 1978, uh, I don't know what that video was. I don't know if it was like the official video or like a, like a concert or something. I'm not really uh, familiar with their stuff, obviously, so I don't know. Um, but like I said, it was performed at the Music for UNICEF concert. So maybe that was that. I don't know. Um, and then Spirits Having Flown came out in 1979. Um, it was the first album after their Saturday, Saturday Night Fever uh, soundtrack, basically. Um, the album's first three tracks were released to singles and all reached number one in the U.S., giving the Bee Gees an unbroken run of six U.S. chart toppers in a one-year time period, equaling a feat shared by Bing Crosby, Elvis Presley, and the Beatles. That's, I mean, what? You can't really get in better company than that. I'm not even, um, well, I know who Bing Crosby is. I've heard his stuff, obviously, you know, because I, I, more like holiday things I've heard, but I know he's uber famous. Um, so it was the first Bee Gees album to make the UK top 40 in 10 years, not counting the Saturday Night Fever soundtrack. 
Um, so apparently this is <laughs> probably one of their most highly regarded albums. Um, apparently it marked the end to the band's most successful era prior to a severe downturn in the early 80s when they were subject to a near total radio blackout, particularly uh, per- <laughs> uh, specifically in America. And Robin Gibb would refer to as censorship and evil in interviews. Um, I don't know exactly what did it. I don't know if it was a revolt against what i guess disco is that what it would be you know because i know they didn't really start off as that but um and i wouldn't even call what we just listened to disco i mean i maybe you could it kind of just sounded like i don't know all i don't know what you call it just pop music you know what i mean like that's what it sounded like I i wouldn't call it disco but those two things aren't interchangeable either so you know whatever um that that's kind of sad that they got a total blackout though. I don't know if it was because of that cover that they did. I know that there was that album that I read about that was like a Beatles cover album. And then that said that their cover basically um, messed them up for a while. I don't know if that was it, but like I said, I'm not very familiar with these guys, Um, but it was Barry Gibb on lead vocals, um, Robin Gibb on harmony and backing vocals and lead vocals on too much heaven. And then Maurice Gibb, harmony and backing vocals and lead vocals on too much heaven. So they all just kind of went off each other. Okay. Um, So I'm guessing Barry was the one who was hitting the high notes or was that Robin? So I, like I said, I'm new to the, and they're all three brothers. So that's very confusing and just off bat, you know? So forgive me, give me a little grace and just, uh, you know, let me know, let me in on the, the knowledge. Um, cause like I said, this isn't, I've never really delved into this type of music, maybe like a little bit here or there, but you know, this is definitely new territory for me, but I enjoyed it though. It's, um, not my favorite thing I've ever heard, but that's really hard to beat cause I've heard a lot of stuff, but for a radio pop song that with some amazing vocals and great feeling to it, I will definitely give it that. That was awesome. And I'm definitely down to hear more. So if you guys have any of the Bee Gees tracks you think I'd like, leave it down below. What'd you think of it? If you hadn't heard that before, I'm guessing you probably have, if you're watching this. So I guess that doesn't really count. Um, I have one more Bee Gees request we'll do next Wednesday and then I'm free. So let me know what you guys want to watch. I'll see you later. <gasps> Bye-bye. And if you are in search of a musical community <laughs> and you'd like to see a video done just like this for you, uh, look in the description. There's a link for our Patreon community. Uh, join the $15 tier or up. You get one free request a month. Uh, if you join, just look at the September Patreon request thread. It'll be the pin post on there. It'll have all the rules and regulations and such, shall we say, for the request. Uh, there's also a PayPal as well in the description if you want to send a tip or request in that way. Thanks for watching, y'all. I will see y'all later.